Uh, I'm from the Meserov Lab in the UCSD School of Medicine, uh, and I'm here to talk to you today about genome space. And, and just a little bit of cross-promotion, we'll be having another talk in, about gene pattern notebooks at ISMB on Monday. It's in Tech Track number 15, and we have a poster at ISMB as well, uh, number E06. So genomic data, as we all in this room probably know, comes in lots of different varieties. So there's, you know, DNA, RNA, protein sequences, protein structure, you know, genetic, physical interaction data, um, and phenotypic data. And integrating all of these sources can lead to, oops, can lead to, hold on a second, integrating all of these data sources can lead to a better, a better understanding of what's actually going on in the biological system. So if we take a look at some research from a few years back, in, in Cell, one of our colleagues, Howard Chang, um, posted a stem cell paper, uh, which is looking at the module map of the growth of epithelial stem cells, or the differentiation of epithelial stem cells. And in this case, he used five different data sets, uh, four different data types, and six different tools to do the analysis. And, and all in all, it sort of adds up to about 14 different steps, and that's not in including the fact that there was like multiple times where you have to download the data from one tool, convert the format, you know, playing with it in Excel, and then uploading it again. So this, as you would guess, it, uh, introduces a whole lot of friction into the scientific process, which, which slows things down and makes it a lot more difficult also for the non-programming biologists to use the tools. So to address some of this, this issue, uh, we've built Genome Space, which is a platform with a, with a goal to really make it easier to integrate different tools and genomic analyses together. Um, so you can think of Genome Space essentially as a lightweight connection layer that, that helps the tools talk to each other, share data, and, and to let the data be passed between the tools easily. Um, so it's built on uh, uh, web protocols, and it's using uh, Amazon Web Storage, so cloud-based storage that we provide to the users. But you can also hook in additional storage, so it makes it really easy if, for example, you've already got your data in Google Drive or in Amazon or in Dropbox, you can just hook in your account into Genome Space and then easily pass the data from Dropbox directly to any of the various tools. So some of the other features that it has are automatic data conversions. So if, for example, you're working in, you know, GE Workbench, which has one concept of how a, a file should be formatted for gene expression data, and you want to pass it to, say, gene pattern, if you do that through genome space, the format conversion will happen automatically. It gets done as a streaming protocol, so you can just say, send this file over to, you know, tool B, and it gets transferred and converted automatically. Um, it's very easy to bring new data in. Um, there are a variety of different uh, data sources that we'll, we'll see in a moment. Um, and you can also just basically give it a URL and let our servers in the cloud pull the data from wherever you already have it. And it also includes lots of ability to control who you share your data with. So you can in create groups or define individuals who you want to share your data to or you can make it completely public and, and make it wide open for everybody to see. And then lastly, something that I'm going to come back to later in the talk, we have what's a, a new recipe resource. And, and this is essentially simple guides and workflows that show you how to bring different tools together and some common uh, analysis tasks that involve multiple tools that you can reuse. So when you get started, you can begin at genomespace.org. That's the website. Um, it has a bunch of information, including things like news highlights. So, you know, there's a little news item about being here today, for example. Uh, blog posts, connections to our social media channels, as well as documentation about the various tools and recipes. So for the software developers here, you can go in and find all the details about our APIs, for example. Now, if you were to click on the user login, the little user login uh, link here, that'll bring you to the web app where you would actually be doing more of your, your typical genome space work. So this, because again, we're, we're essentially providing a way for you to access files in the cloud, this looks a lot like your, your sort of standard file browser on a, a Mac or Windows, uh, with the addition of this toolbar across the top here that includes the, the various different tools that you have. Now you can customize your toolbars and put together different combinations of tools that, that you want. Um, 
Over here, uh, the number two, you can see the list of directories that you have hooked in. So again, everybody who signs up for an account will get some free storage from us, which is hosted on, on Amazon. Um, you'll also see the files that have been shared to you either individually or shared publicly. And if you've hooked in, say, Dropbox or your Google Drive account, that'll also show up here so that you can then you know, put files to and from there. Um, bringing files in, simply drag and drop from your desktop. If you've got files that are already somewhere else on a server, you can also bring an URL and just sort of drop that into the appropriate spot and it'll then pull the data in all on the, on the server side so you never have to worry about downloading a BAM file to your, to your laptop and then uploading it again into genome space. Now as for the tools that are available, uh, we have at the moment approximately 20. And they really run the gamut through some visualization tools. So there's Cytoscape there if you're looking at wanting to look at networks, uh, IGV for people who are looking at anything sort of aligned to a sequence. We have a bunch of data sources. The, the most recent one is Firehose where you can get all of the, the, the data from TCGA. Um, in Silico DB, which will front and get you access to all of the geo data sets, Array Express. Um, and then we also have some others that are sort of workflow engines or, or tools that have lots of other tools within them. So we have Galaxy, we have Gene Pattern, and GE Workbench, all of which have, you know, tens to hundreds of different analyses built within themselves. Now, if you don't see a tool here that you would like, you can add it yourself very easily. So the lowest common denominator here is that the tool be launchable on the web and that it can read a URL. So if you have a tool that can do those two things, you can add it into your own toolbar, either privately or again shared to you know, your own select group or, or more widely. But if you want to have access to more than just sort of the, the wide open public data, you need to at least handle basic authentication to be able to get your private data into that tool. And, and that means you can put it in with literally no programming on your end if you can just handle basic auth to get a file. Now if you want to do something a little bit more nicely integrated, uh, Genome Space is basically, you know, it's all open source. You can fork us on Bitbucket and, and take a look at the code there, but it's all open source. It's all RESTful APIs. And for authentication, we're basically using OpenID. So if you want to be able to use single sign-on, so right now all of the tools in there, if you sign in with Genome Space, you can get to any of them without having to sign in again. You can hook into that very easily. If you want to be able to launch other tools or just save data, all of those things are very easy through the REST APIs. Now, particularly if you're a, a Java developer, there's also a client development kit for that so that you can do it even more easily. Or also for JavaScript, there's a client development kit. And if you want to use, say, Python or Ruby, we have code examples on our blog that show you how to authenticate and connect up to our APIs as well. Now, that sort of addresses the fact that we're trying to let the tools talk together and maybe reduce some of the friction of using multiple tools. But that's not really the end goal. The end goal is to actually make the scientific research become a little bit easier and, and make it faster. So for that, we have recipes. And what recipes are is simple little um, analysis blocks, if you like, that usually incorporate two to three different tools using a, a sort of a basic task that's pretty common. And we have a new play. The idea here is that we're trying to sort of copy the uh, molecular cloning lab manual. We want to do the same sort of approach for in silico research is what that has done for, for bench research. So for that, we have a part of the, the Genome Space website called the Recipe Resource. And that lets people, anybody from uh, the Genome Space community, create their own recipes and put them up there to, to share with the world. Uh, it has navigation, all the, the usual sort of interactions where people can vote for their favorite recipes and add comments. Um, and if you're an author, it has basically a bunch of templates so that you can put in, you know, the summary and the various steps that are required, and it'll automatically generate the page for you and, and hook the recipe in. So rather than just looking at a bunch of screenshots, we'll take a quick look back at a portion of this Chang paper that I referenced earlier in the, in the live resource so you can see what that looks like. So in this particular case, this last little part here of uh, looking at a module network of regulatory genes we have built out as a, as a little portion of, as a recipe, which is a portion of this larger workflow. So the recipe resource looks like this. 
And um, what you can see at the, at the home page is there's the, the basic you know, user guides and so on. And we, we have our, our, our featured recipe down here on the left, which, which changes approximately monthly. Um, and then you can go search for whatever you're interested in. So in this case, I've, I've already pre-filled. We know that epithelial is going to show up. And we see that this comes up. There are, are three recipes that, that match that search. And we'll take a look at the first one, which is the Create and Visualize a Module Network. So if I just expand this, what I first get is just sort of a little look at the summary. So this is our, our summary of the recipe. tells you basically the, the inputs, the, the basics of the analyses that are going to be done. Uh, I can see as I scroll down if anybody has you know, upvoted or downvoted it or created comments on it. And you can see that it's been tagged with a few different things like microarray, transcriptional regulation, et cetera. So if I want to go on and look at the, the full recipe, I can, I can go on to that. And our recipes tend to look like this. So at, at the top level, you'll see that we, we start off, typically we'll have a video that describes how to do all of the steps in the recipe. So you can play that. Sometimes this will be a single video. Sometimes this will be a, uh, a playlist where you can break down all of the individual steps. And uh, I've got my, my computer muted, so you don't get the sound, but there is actually a voiceover that's sort of describing things as you go. You know, again, we'll see the summary uh, that's describing what's going on, uh, the various inputs that are required, in particular, the, the kind of data and the source of the data that are used, and then outputs and the various steps that are required to do the analysis. So then each step, you can look at the summary or you can you can expand it out and take a look at all of the details. Um, for people who want to ask questions or comment, you can scroll down to the bottom and you can add comments. Anybody can comment if they're logged in. Um, in my case, I've got the edit and, and delete buttons here just because I'm an administrator on this site. Now, if you want to edit or create your own recipe, I can edit this again because this is an admin account. But basically, any other person wants to create a recipe, we'll get a form like this with the rich text editor, and you can go in, put in your images, and describe all of the steps that you want to take um, in your recipe, and go through as many iterations as you want until you, you share it. Now, we don't provide any uh, editorial oversight on these. We, we take a look at recipes, make sure that they're not uh, spam in any way, but other than that, anything you want to publish is okay with us. So with that, we'll just... Oops. Let me, my problem is I can't get the uh, thing on this screen. So I'm a little bit trapped. There we go. Okay, so that's basically what our recipe resource looks like. So I'd, I'd like to encourage all of you to take a look and explore Genome Space. Uh, we have actually got our, our first community-generated recipe that just went live uh, about a month ago. The recipe resource has only been up for about three or four months now. Um, but we're looking for more. We have a F1000 channel, so if you do create a recipe, we can help you uh, cross-publish it there. Um, and that's just become live too. If you're a developer and you'd like to hook in your tool, again, we have all of the APIs and a fair bit of documentation published on our website, but that's, uh, we always also like to work with people directly. So if you want to contact me or just go in to genospace.org and hit the contact us, we'd be happy to talk to you. Um, and with that, I think I've got a couple of minutes left for questions still.